What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 46 returns today, uh, massive games as we're uh, playing part 2 of Sloggy Season, we've got the EFL Cup last 16 at home to Bournemouth, we'll have the second half of the Champions League group stage, as things stand right now we are one defeat away from probably exiting after just one win in our first three and we'll also have more big games in the Premier League right now, two clear of Manchester City and still undefeated for now going for the free peak. Before we get to the Bournemouth game though, we're going to see the winner of the Ballon d'Or in 2028. Whereas Cody Gakpo won it again. There it is. He has indeed Cody Gakpo back to back Ballon d'Ors for Liverpool's number 18. I mean, he's off to a great start this season, to, to, to be fair to him. You know, he's been a really, really good beginning to our uh, to, to our third year here at Anfield. Ten goals in as many games, and he's got three assists as well. We, we were shocked when he won it last year, but I have to say this season, I, I think he's definitely... Definitely not undeserving of that. I must be honest here. Of course you got Mbappe. Of course you got Haaland. Of course you got Vinny. Of course you got Musiala and, well, so on. But when you look at those stats here, why not? Why not Cody Gap? I don't think he deserved it last year as Eze is now going to become an official CM as well, which is nice to see. And they're going to put him on that ball with a midfield development plan to get a high defensive work rate. But, yeah, Cody Gap, I don't think he's undeserving of it now. Maybe last year it was a little premature. But now when you look at those stats and the importance to, this, uh, to the team... Right now, on course for a 38-league goal season and a record as well. I don't think he's undeserving it at all. Cody Gakpo, back-to-back -back Ballon d'Ors. Right, first game, our former team Bournemouth in the EFL Cup last 16. So far, the only domestic honour we haven't won with Liverpool since joining. I'd love to put that right this season. Going to do that, going to get through this round. Come on, Liverpool. So we discussed this in the last episode. It is still, of course, our lowest priority of the four competitions. Granted, we haven't won it yet. But uh, it still has far less prestige than, a, than an FA Cup, for example, that we won last year. But would love to get to the cause if we could as Everett G's A fires wide early. And you might have noticed for the game, got a couple of starters out there. Kirk is at left back, Jones through the middle, Clark on the wing as well. You know, in, in the Arsenal game, we, we feel that a completely rotated side. But for me, the Carabao Cup kind of goes like this. The further we go... The more serious we take it, the more stars we put out there. So yeah, to, tonight a few stars. If we were to hypothetically reach the quarters, we'd see even more in the last day as well. Clark on the ball through. There's Felix. Elliot. Jack takes aim. Oh, good stop by Michael Cooper. And the ex-Plymouth Argyle goalkeeper. We don't forget, we signed for Bournemouth. Bought him there as our backup for Lunin. Makes the save to keep it at 0-0. 33 minutes in. That's things down. It's all Liverpool. Keep this intensity up. I'm sure we'll find that opening up before long. Seems to go for the break. Balls haven't really caused me a problem yet. But you know when you say that, you're asking for trouble. I mean, you, you're just asking for it. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to say that from a corner, nonetheless, then you know what's going to happen. Rafinha heads in the opener. And the ex-Barcelona and Leeds man gives the Cherries the opening goal. Beats his former team. Well, it was a former team. We didn't have him. But beats Jack Clark in the near post. Bournemouth in front against the runner play. That, that's my fault, though. That's a, a total jinx, but it's always going to happen when you say that. He's a Felix. Stefan. He's a... Come on! Instant response, though. And Liverpool with the level of right before the break. Lovely little build up that and a great finish by Oberetsu. Yeah, we'll have that Rojas win, mate. Jones to Stefan and now he's a I've got Bradley on the underlap. Can I oh no no, no he's gonna be offside there. That's a great ball into Athena though, and I see Connor in the middle. Bradley couldn't get his first goal since returning and Oh what a goal! But karma, karma, because there is an injury for Jack Clark. The ex cherry has just gone down and that looked like it's going to be longer than a bruise. We've had two bruises since the season began. We are waiting for our first more serious injury. And I think that is going to be the first one. Jack Clark went for the acrobatic. He couldn't execute it. But Curtis could. And in the end, as Jack stays down, Curtis gives us the lead. But that is the blow. Injury for Jack. And I'm taking absolutely no chances. 90 overall. He's, he's had a couple of injuries since coming in. And now it looks like it's going to be another classic career mode broken toe. Getting straight down the tunnel. 
You're very surprised. That's just a bruise. Unfortunately, that looks like it is going to be a, 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 a toe break, a classic career mode injury. As Rafinha, oh, wonderful dribbling, makes it 2-2. What a tie this is. Honestly, the Carabao Cup, it might be the, the, the lowest priority and the lowest ranked of the competition these three teams are in. But believe me, they're going head-to-head -to -head tonight. This has been a class game. Four goal for it, and there's 24 minutes to go. Can either side find a winner? Or is it going spot kicks? That's how we exit the competition last year at the last 16. Might well be having deja vu here against our former team. So it's going to be one late chance to win this into the final four minutes of normal time. Ebrecci scored our first to Elliot. There's Felix, holds it up well. Elliot, can I squeeze it to him? Yes, I can. Bradley's running in behind. It'll drop to him, Connor Bradley. What is saved by Cooper. Denying Bradley his first goal since returning. And forcing, I think, a shootout. Yep, the Phoenix Jones just blocked my shot. <laughs> Pens it is. It's going penalties. And for the second year in a row, we are heading to spot kicks to see who will be going through to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. Talk about deja vu. Last year exit of St. James's. This year we'll see if we can get through an Anfield. So first man up, our first goal scorer, Everett Juze, who fired in the leveller. Denied. Cooper made a brilliant save towards the end of the game as well as Rafinha puts Bournemouth in front. And yeah, I think we're going to have more penalty shootout heartbreak. We've had, we've had a lot of it since we joined Liverpool. As Felix does level it, but um, I, I, I just, I just, I'm so bad at penalty shootouts. It's unbelievable. I just can't win them. I mean, I've won a couple, but even so, going bottom corner, rarely do that. Oh, maybe we should start doing it more. Curtis Jones fires it in. I bet they changed this time. Nope, they didn't. Ravela puts it in bottom corner. And Harvey Elliott really needs to score this one. This is a crucial pen here. I think it's over. I, I, I just can't win. I don't, know, I don't know what it is, but I just don't have the self-confidence, the belief. And this is extending further than just penalty shootouts. I, I, I just can't. I just can't do it. I just cannot win pens. Well, we're going for the treble this year. The quadruple has gone early. Bournemouth knocks out second year in a row. We exited the EFL Cup in the last 16 on pens. Unbelievable. If we were to have got through, who would we be taking on in the quarterfinals? I bet it's Doncaster Rovers. It's not. It's Norwich. Would have been a championship side, but even so. Yep, no, no EFL Cups for Liverpool since we've been here. And, oh, well, it could have been worse. Jack, like I thought that was going to be a, uh, a broken toe, four-week injury. Not great. He's, he's had quite a few injuries to save, hasn't he? And uh, a sprained knee. So we'll miss some crucial Champions League games, but thankfully not as bad as it could have been. By the way, I don't know why we didn't get a ceremony for Cody Gakpo. That's a bit annoying. Now I would like to see it. It's, it's a cool feature that, yeah, I've had, not going to lie. But unfortunately, we, we skipped it this year. Maybe there's a new COVID variant going around. I had to do it through lockdown. Right, anyway, uh, following game, Southampton home. And to bounce back here, a big win in the Premier League. And they get 10 wins in 11 to start the season. And 10 on the trot as well in the league. Come on, Liverpool. A lot of people talk about 2020 as being sort of like the lost year, if you will, in, in terms of the, uh, the the lockdown and so on. I, I don't know why, but for some reason it's 2022 for me. It's like, I, I can't, if you were if you're asking me what happened in 2020, I can figure quite a few things. 2021, yeah, quite a few things. Oh, that's a terrible foul out. But 20, 2022, I can't tell you what happened in 2022. I've got no idea. Anyway, an injury there for Kanate early. Seven minutes in, and here we go. Here we go. We had a few bruises to start the season off, but you know we are playing midweek. Oh, what a ball! Midweek games every week now. The injuries are going to start coming, and I think just like for Clark, that is going to be an injury for Kanate. He won't just suffer a bruise from. 2022. Bizarre, bizarre year. Oh, what an unlucky deflection that is, my goodness. You know, there are certain goals where there's just nothing. I mean, nothing you can do about it. And Campbell Dean Suleimana, who, if I'm being honest here, is lucky to still be on the pitch. I think on another night, that could have been a straight red card for his tackle on Konate. But the ball ricochets right to his feet. We know this dude is rapid, and he's just given the Saints a shot lead at Anfield. This is one of those games, and we'll all have them, where nothing, and I mean nothing, goes your way. We already came from behind to win three games this season in the Premier League. That's pretty staggering out of ten matches played. Um, you know, a third of our wins coming from, from a trading position. 
So why can't we do it again? Trent through to Cody. I see you, Diaz, but Gakpo's going to take it himself. Back-to-back -back Ballon d'Or winner. I don't think there'll be enough time to get a, uh, another chance for the break. But 11 in 11, man is on absolute flames. And, you know, we haven't talked about this in the save because we haven't had a chance yet. But, 40 club? 40 club? We haven't had a man join the 40 club since FC began. I think Cody might have the best chance at a lot of things, Stan. He's averaging one in one right now. He's certainly on pace to get close to it, at least. We're already the fourth game this season in 11 Premier League contests where we've came from behind to claim a result. In the end, our winning run ends after nine in the Premier League, but the unbeaten run continues. None in 11. No defeats in 11, I should say. Yeah, can't win them all, man. Sometimes you've got to take a point, especially when a training position. It's not a terrible result. Just before we played that Valencia game in the Mestalla, which is honestly one of the biggest games since we joined Liverpool. Because if we lose that, we're, we're out, really. I mean, because Bayern are going to beat Slavia Prague. How bad was the injury for Konate? Thankfully, just a bruise, which means whilst he missed a trip to Spain, he will be back for our following Premier League contest. Yep, this is, honestly, this is probably one of the biggest games since we joined Liverpool, because right now we're on the brink of Exeter. If we lose this game here and Bayern do beat Slavia Prague, we'll be five points behind Bayern and six behind Valencia. The chance of getting through from that position with two to go is going to be incredibly unlikely. A win will be massive. The most important thing is we just don't lose tonight. Defeat, and I'd say we're all but out of the Champions League in the group stage. Huge contest here. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, it's amazing how quickly things can change in football. Last year, Valencia were very close to being relegated. You know, famous old club at the Mestalla. But they were so close to going down to the second tier. They only survived, but I think it was two points in the end. And this year, but it, 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 they've got a chance. As Cody Gakpo fires wide early of, uh, of qualifying for Europe. It's amazing how things can turn around so, so quickly. And uh, it's, it's why I always say, man, if you're going through those tough times, you know that saying is too sharp pass. Yeah, man, keep, keep your head up. Keep your head up. Practice self-love. Be kind to yourself. But put the work in too and uh, believe that things can change. Certainly after Valencia. You never know, next year we, uh, we might see them back in, if not the Champions League, then at least a European competition of some kind. Anyway, right now in the Champions League, I'm really struggling against these guys, man. They, they've got a brilliant team, don't get me wrong. Noni Madiuke, Alex Bayern is really good in this game. Obviously, Evan Ferguson's up top. Lewis Ferguson's growing nicely as well. But fuck, come on. They are, they are a tough team to play against, but I knew this was going to be a tough group. It certainly has been. And so tonight, I'm just thinking, get, make sure you get the draw. Just get back to Anfield. Oh, no, 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 no. Alisson bails me out. Get back to Anfield. Still with a chance of going through. Curtis, too dope. I see you on the overlap. Can you make the right run? And this is yours. Yes, come on. Back-to-back -back Ballon d'Or winner. Bailing me out consistently. Cody Gakpo gives us a massive, and I mean a massive, lead in the east of Spain. But can we hold on to it? That's the question. That's a lovely flip ball through. Nonny finds Evan Ferguson. In a soon now. Capelou. Good tackle by Bradley. And just couldn't get it clear. Ferguson. 1-1. One, one. A goal of my own undoing. Trying to pass out from the back of the Mestalla when you're under pressure underperforming against a really good side. I mean, you're dicing with danger there. Don't get me wrong, it's the Liverpool way. It's what we like to do. But sometimes, you just got to go old school, man, and kick it out. Evan Ferguson's first in the group. And a big one. Valencia, find their level up. And I think Stan is staying top. Yes. Now, I have seen as a goal in the top right. Oh, but it's a goal tonight. Directly after Ferguson's leveler as well. Bayern have just equalised against Slavia Prague. The Czech side, if they can take points off Bayern there, that'll do us a massive, massive favour heading into the penultimate game. But what do I say? Favours are nice, but don't expect them. Just do your job. Cody Gakpo is doing his job every game. Back in front instantly. Liverpool restore the lead in the Mestalla. It's the final 15 minutes. Can we see this out? Great block by Kwanzaa. Defensively dogged in this second half. Haven't given Valencia a sniff. And that's what we need to keep on doing if we are to see this out here. Bought on Stefan and Jarrell to try and shore up the back line. Oh, that's a poor pass. Cody, keep running. 
Oh, this is going to do it. Poor pass. Cody 101 for his third hat trick of the season. And a massive win tonight on Mestaya. Goalkeepers are broken, but you know who isn't? Cody Gakpo. Third hat trick of the season already, and his first in Europe. Massive win on Mestaya. And a much, much needed one as well. How we lost tonight, we'll be on the brink of going out, but a win is going to give us a great chance now of going through if we beat Bayern on match day five. This is a massive, massive win. You cannot understate this here in the east of Spain. Pulling out of the bag when we needed it the most. Yep, we still need to beat Bayern on match day five, but at least we've given ourselves a chance of getting through after being on the brink of exit. Before we get there, though, let's focus on the task at hand. Following game, Nottingham Forest away at the City ground, back in the Premier League. Come on, Liverpool. We've been talking recently about great starter teams in the Premier League, great starter sides. Honestly, Nottingham Forest, one of the best you could uh, you could use, man. We'll see an absolutely massive club, historic club, as Cody Gakpo is denying yet another goal right before the break. The real stadium, the city ground, iconic old ground in the game as well. Backs onto the River Trent, it's gorgeous, uh, wonderful kits. You know, long term, not too sure about the manager changing this year. Steve Cooper to Nuno, that seems like more of a short term appointment. So good to put the stamp down and what you call a return to glory, not a road to glory with Forrest's former excellent record winning major honours as well. If you're looking for a starter team in the Premier League this year, not in a Forest, one of the, one of the best you could use. And if you want to do some, uh, some cool restrictions as well. Uh, you can maybe limit yourself to, to, to free transfers or cheap transfers and loans. Uh, due to their uh, their points deduction this year for, for breaching the FFP. Um, yep, great team to use. Highly recommend them. Love the kits as well. There's, oh, Harvey's given, given loads of space. and Good stop, but really should have finished that, man. I've, I've only scored the one goal with Elliot since I've, I've brought him back from PSG. And I really should have got him his second there. Good, good start to the second half after a strong end to the first. But that's things stand still deadlocked and set. For our second draw in a row in the Premier League and third overall. Okay, it's Trent. Oh, this time. This time. This time. Take your time. Oh, finish. Uh, Harvey Elliott just said, hang on, hang on a second, Gaffer. Listen, you're the one controlling me here, all right? <laughs> what a finish. What a finish. And that's how you do it. Bent into the far corner. Sometimes I'll smash it near post, but I'm finding a lot more success this year when bending it with finesse. Harvey Elliott proves that point right there. Class finish, second of the year since coming back. Liverpool take the deserved lead. Well, not the most convincing of wins, but wins are wins, and I'll take it. If you've got to grind out a 1-0, then so be it. Three points to the city ground, hard fought victory that one there. But it will keep us top of the table and still unbeaten 12 games in. Back of the international break. I've just seen that Trent is now ready to become an official CM as well. Four goals and five assists in 12 games. Jumped off to a red hot start. A couple of games without a goal now, but as he jumps up to 91 overall now. Goodness gracious. I mean, this dude is just unbelievable, man. In incredible. And he, you know, he still might be able to hit another. In fact, he probably will hit a uh, 92 overall before the season has ended. What an absolutely unbelievable player. Incredible. Right, uh, following game, big one. Let's keep it rolling. Brighton at home as we aim to stay top of the table right now. Still undefeated, but Man City hot on our coattails and only behind us on goal difference also without loss this season. Massive clash here against the Zerbi side. Come on, Liverpool. I forgot Kirkes is, uh, is 90 overall now as well, so I'll have to show you his full stats soon too. Um, there, there is a chance. We've got four now. Obviously, Clark, Trent... Kirkes and Gakpo. There is a chance Colwell might join this season. But not, not, a, not a guarantee. I'll, I'll keep your posters on that. He's now up to 89 overall. I think it might take him another year to get there. But he's getting there. As this Liverpool team continues to... Oh, Gakpo off the bar. Get better and better and better. So close to a 12th of the year for Cody Gakpo. Still 0-0. Free kick right on the edge for Liverpool. Now, we've already scored one this season with Trent Alexander-Arnold. That was our second of the save and first since joining Liverpool. So, if he's done it once, he can do it twice. Now, that free kick, we just, we just lifted it. We chipped it like that. Uh, this time around, I'm going to get under it. But not, not quite as under it. Trent to take, though. Oh, off the post. 
so close to his second of the season already. Off the woodwork from Trent. Man, oh man. That would have been a great way to uh, to mark it in 92 overall. It's a ball that. Um, Buonanotte. Going to step inside. Dispossessed by... He, he watched him every step of the way there. Cole Will. He, he just waited and waited and waited for the perfect time to put the leg in. Once he did, he was always going to win it. Diaz to Gakpo with a 1-2 and Liverpool in front. But it all starts from the timing of Levi Colwell. Sometimes it's all about just being patient and waiting for the right moment to strike. Yeah, sometimes you can be a bit aggressive, charging like a bull, make a strong tackle and gain some momentum. But sometimes it's to softly, softly approach that's necessary. Just jockey. Just jockey and wait. And eventually a little slip or a perfect moment for you to intercept is there. And you don't just win the tackle, but you win the ball as well. All starts from Levi. Diaz and Gakpo to 1 2. And shot Cora. It's the top scorer of another. Kenzie down the line to Harvey. And he keeps on running as well. Oh, keep, keep going, Ben. Oh, go on, Ben. Go on, Ben. No goal since the first year we brought him in. And that continues. Trafford with the save. And Diaz, a retired angle, almost squeezed it in. Off the post. He's not a guy. I don't know how I scored with him back in season one, to be honest. As Cody Gagpo is also denied by Trafford. Eight to close this out. We're almost there. And he's going to do it. We're going to grind out another 1 0 victory. And another clean sheet for Allison. And most crucially now, still only six goals conceded in the league in 13 games. As things stand, we're on course to only concede 18 for the campaign. There's only been one team that's conceded fewer goals than that. Chelsea in that iconic defensive masterclass season under Jose Mourinho. I don't think I'll ever best that record. I've never done it before. And whilst we're not on pace to do it this season, it'd still be a chance. Most importantly, though, just keep on winning and keep staying top of the table. Anyway, Bayern Munich next, man. I'm rambling because I'm nervous for that. Lose that or out of the Champions League. I know I've got some Gunners fans out there thinking, hang on a second, Doxy boy. I reckon you're forgetting someone. Yes, I am indeed. My apologies. Got that wrong. Arsenal, uh, 1999 Premier League season. Only 17 goals conceded at that point. It was the record before Mourinho's Chelsea eclipsed it. Anyway, uh, following game, Bayern Munich, match day five, Champions League group stage. Without a shadow of a doubt, one of the biggest games since we've been here. Win this, and we guarantee qualification due to Valencia and Bayern need to face each other on match day six, but lose it. And yep, no doubt about it, we are probably going out. Massive, massive contest at Anfield. Famous European night. Have to win this. Come on, Liverpool. So we know that Valencia are going to beat Slavia Prague tonight in Spain. So as things stand, Kwanzaa, you got to get that. What well, it, mate? Oh, you got to. Behind me. Hold on. Curtis. Curtis. Oh my goodness. You just got to avoid defeat in this one here. A win would be massive, but if we lose this, we are out. We are out to not over loss. It's one of those kind of like stick or twist moments, really. Like, do you, do you go, do you go for, a, for a winner? No, you might end up losing it by chasing it, or do you just say, look, we'll take the point. Trust will do our job in the Czech Republic on match day six and hope that Valencia lose to Bayern. Because we're, we're, we're going to finish above them if we finish level on points due to the head-to-head -head record. We're not Bayern if we draw this game. We have the worst head-to-head -head record. This is, oh, this is an intriguing second half coming. Stick or twist. Yeah, I'm trying to do the maths in my head, which is never a good idea, especially when you're trying to concentrate on the gameplay as well. But... I'm, uh, I'm trying to think if we... Don't dive in, don't dive in. Don't, uh, I should have dived in, should have dived in, should have dived in. We're in trouble. If we beat Slavia Prague on match day six and Bayern beat Valencia, then we'll qualify on the head to head record. But if Valencia just get a point on match day six against Bayern, or better, doesn't matter what we do, we go out. As things stand, Destiny is out of our own hands heading into the final group game. Just haven't had the chances. We've not had the chances since Bayern's that lead. Haven't. Oh, Conquest. Oh, what is that? How has he just saved that? How has he just saved that? Oh, my God. Cody Gagpo gets down to his feet and he's... <laughs> Listen, it's unconventional. It's unorthodox. And it's unbelievable. He saved it with the forearm with a trailing hand. 
deflected over the bar. Incredible save. And we're, we're going out. We are going out. And when the group was drawn, I said... Oh, Jamal Musiala has just got one of the best assists of the save. Well, I didn't say that because that would have been foreshadowing and then some. But what I said was, this is going to be an unbelievably tough group. Back-to-back -back losses to Bayern. Only two wins taken from five. And qualification in tatters. I think it's over. I think we're out. I think we're out because, let's be honest here, we know that Valencia, you know, would beat Slavia Prague and Mestaya. So that means that we're, we're going to go down and all Valencia will need to do on... Oh, to be fair to the Czech side, they almost took a point there. That would be massive if I did it, but that means now, heading into match day six, Destiny's out of our own hands. If Bayern and Valencia won, they can do a gentleman's agreement and just play for the draw. I, I think we're out. I, th I think we are out. We need to win on match day six away in the Czech Republic. And if Valencia just get a point against Bayern, we're out. And somehow, somehow we're going to pick ourselves up for the following contest. It's the biggest league game of the season so far, 13 games in. Man City away at the Etihad. With both teams having the exact same win, draw, loss record. Only separated on goal difference. Another huge contest in this epic developing rivalry. The latest chapter at the Etihad in an early title battle. Massive game is to follow on from that loss here. Come on, Liverpool. Interestingly enough, no Haaland in Man City's lineup for this game. You might have noticed the, the guy up top, that number 28, is uh, Jerome Daniel. And uh, if, if you, you know, if you, if you play career mode for longer than uh, I don't know two hours, you uh, you probably know whose region he is. Yeah, the Benzema region. He, it, it's funny. He is like the most. Uh, common kind of like superstar region you get in Korea and it has been for about two or three years now as Diaz hits it really straight at Edison to be honest there but uh, yeah he, he the, the Benzema region appears in every save you know run from it dread it the Benzema region arrives as Gakpo heads just over the bar he's 89 overall for those curious and um, yeah not, not, a, not a bad Haaland replacement there I don't mind superstar regions at all, you know, to make the game fun, but sometimes it's like, oh, this guy again? Like, it's it's literally always a Benzema region, you know, that ends up being, like, the, the best in world football. It, it's strange because, like, I don't, I don't fully understand it. Someone will have to explain it to me in the comments, but, like, you know, even though Benzema... Hold on. I'll get to my point in a minute. Oh! <sighs> How many times have we hit the woodwork to start this season off? It's unbelievable. There's a magnet in that ball. We're constantly in the frame, man. Oh, I see you, Clark. What a ball. What a ball. Yes, come on. Welcome back, Mr. Clark. But what a through ball that is. Come on. Curtis Jones has been sensational since returning. And the finish from Clark is nice running onto it. But it's all about the assist from Curtis, man. Absolutely brilliant through ball. But it's no less than we deserve. Better team in the first half, right before the break. Reds take the deserved lead. And as things stand in a battle between the two undefeated sides, there's going to be just one standing at the full time whistle. And they're the boys playing in red. Whole half to play, though, taking nothing for granted. Listen, I'm not going to say if Jack Clark was ready for the Bayern game, we would have won that or even drawn it. That would be doing... Oh, play advantage, please, ref. That would be doing Bayern a disservice, but... I know we would have had a much bigger chance of getting at least a point had he been ready for it. But I saved him for this game. And I guess, in a way, I'm glad I did. Because he scored the first goal, but it's McKenzie who sets up the second. Cody runs onto it. As he'll continue to chase for Doc's history and joining the 40 club. But most importantly, Liverpool are bouncing back in the best possible way. I say this all the time now. When you've had a massive, massive loss and you've been dealt a massive blow. I know it is so hard to take. But you've just got to pick yourself up. Dust yourself off and bounce straight back into the next one. Ready to fight. Liverpool have done that. It's the Benzema regen. He's denied by Alisson in the near post. Not over yet, of course, but as things stand on course for a massive win. Four corner. I want the clean sheet as well. No, it's going to go with four and a half to go. Nicolo Barella smashes home. Well, well, listen, you know, if we are to exit the Champions League, it'll be gutting. 
but and I, I know it's very early doors here. We're going to get a massive win here, and there's a couple of things that I haven't done in uh, in all the years we've been doing YouTube. Win a free peat in the Premier League, and we'll be taking a massive step towards that with the win here at the Etihad, and also set a new defensive record in the Premier League. Unfortunately, that goal there worsens our chance of doing it. But Luis Diaz has wrapped up the win. Might have conceded a, uh, a late one. But in the end, it's just a consolation. Two goal cushion restored. Dagger inflicted to Manchester City's heart. And a massive, massive psychological blow. And an early, early blow to their title dreams. Yep, I don't think we're getting through the Champions League now. But the free peat, yeah, we've taken a massive step towards that with a huge win here at the Etihad. And what a bounce back. Losing to Bayern and being on the brink from exiting the Champions League. And then going to the Etihad to take on an unbeaten Man City and beating a 3-1. That is the sign of resilience. Huge, huge win. To be honest, I don't know if I get the time for that Slavia Prague game today because there's been some good contests here. We'll try and squeeze in at least a couple more, if not the final three today anyway. Following game Wednesday night, Aston Villa at home, aiming to stay undefeated and top of the table. Come on, Liverpool. Clark into Gakpo. Keep running, keep running. I see, I see you. You've got loads of space there because Kalulu's been forced out. Great finish. Great, great finish. And it's a welcome back for Mr. Jack Clark. Two goals in two games. You know what, I take it back. If he was fit enough for the Bayern game, we would not have lost that 2-0, man. Surely not. Well, maybe, but still. <laughs> He's so important, man. He's unbelievable. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's going to be 1-1. One, one. <sighs> Come on. Too easy. far too easy. You can't just let him run for it. He's got two red shirts there. I just let him run straight past... But again, it also shows you why. I, I get comments sometimes from you guys saying, oh, Doxy Boy, put a tackle in. This is sometimes why I just prefer not to and just jockey and hope he'll run into me instead. Because if you miss time it against the AI on Ultimate, believe me, you've either given away a penalty or a free kick in a dangerous area or, like in that moment now, a simple one-on-one. -on -one. You ain't going to catch up. Even so. Yeah, the free peaks never been done before. No, it was the best defensive record ever in Premier League history. I don't think that that is going to happen now. Just... You just can't concede if you're going to beat that incredible Chelsea Mourinho record. And I know because some of you guys will be curious as well. Doxy boy, you ever had an undefeated Premier League season? No, haven't. I've had an undefeated La Liga season. And it's the only time I've ever done it back in FIFA 13, my word. Um, oh, Curtis is free there. Go away, smash it. Yes! Back in FIFA 13 with Fletcher Madrid. I think my final season in that entire career mode as well. One of the Doc's GOAT career modes, that one was. Uh, with a Fletcher undefeated season. The only one I've ever had before. But an undefeated Premier League season? Joining Arsenal? Nope, never done that before. So, well, yeah. Champions League is, uh, is looking unlikely from here. As is that Premier League defensive season. But, hey, a couple things we could still do. Free Pete. And an undefeated season. Long way to go, though, of course. Gakpo. Camera. Oh, what a chance. Played it perfectly. Curtis, uh, sorry, Gakpo, I see you. I really wanted to get another goal to, to be honest. That, oh, is that a pen? No way. No way. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Listen, we've, we've had some bad luck this season, but I, I don't see how that is a penalty. Yeah. You know the rule. If, it, if it's an undeserved penalty, we either miss it intentionally or chip it. I don't know. Sometimes people give me hate for missing penalties intentionally. So in this case, we're just going to chip it. If it goes in, it goes in. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And it does indeed go in. But we'll share respect with the celebration. Liverpool 3, Villa 1. But if nothing else, it is another goal towards Gakpo's hope of getting to the 40 club as well. I say get hate. That's not true at all. <laughs> not one bit. I never get hate, man. In 13 years of doing YouTube... The love has been mutual from me to you, to you, to me. Like the Chuckle Brothers, we love each other, man. And yeah, so grateful for that. It's constructive criticism, and I'm more than happy to receive that. But I'm also more than happy to receive the three points. Yep, another game without a clean sheet, but most importantly, another game of a win. And I think we'll leave it there for today's episode of the Realistic Crimmer, guys. So massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll return in the next one with an episode you will not want to miss. More big games of the Premier League as you're going to stay top of the table and undefeated as we get to the halfway stage. And have the FA Cup third round away at Oakwell against the EFL side Barnsley. But of course, before that... Possibly the biggest game since joining Liverpool. Certainly in European football. Final game of the Champions League group stage where we need to win against Slavia Prague and hope Bayern beat Valencia. Otherwise, we are out. 
at the group stage. Have a fantastic day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Realistic Career Mode. Massive one. Do not miss it very soon.